My name is Mark van Hinderachter and uh, I live in Merelbeek near Ghent. And I went to the US uh, on a Fulbright uh, to Harvard. My specialty is in history and uh, I did uh, research in the US. I went to the US and especially to Harvard because ever since I was young I've been fascinated with the United States and I've always heard it was a land of extremes and I just wanted to experience it for myself. Um, at the time I applied uh, for the Fulbright uh, I, I already had a girlfriend and a son so it was immediately clear that we all were going uh, as a family experience. Uh, we had to get married because otherwise my wife couldn't get in to the United States. So that was one, that's one of the more permanent uh, consequences of my stay in the US. <laughs> um, my wife was initially she was a bit uh, skeptic because well you know all the prejudices about the United States and uh, as a European she had quite uh, a lot of them about uh, Americans but after four and a half months in the United States uh, she came back and she was completely flipped. Uh, she was, we are now, uh, she is well, she's uh, an incredibly, she's an incredibly uh, great fan of the United States and uh, we're going back as soon as we can. When I applied for the Fulbright, uh, I, w I already had my PhD, so I went as a postdoctoral fellow, and uh, that made it more, uh, that made it easier to get funding uh, to to fund the uh, the whole experience because uh, I lived uh, in Lexington, that's a, a town near uh, Cambridge, uh, where Harvard is, and uh, uh, well, quality of life is very high there, but uh, there's an, the costs are also high. Uh, we were lucky in a sense that at the moment uh, the dollar was on its lowest ever uh, against the euro. Uh, that has changed a bit. But in any case, I had uh, the opportunity to get extra funding from the uh, fund for uh, uh, the, the F FWO, the uh, S Science Foundation Flanders. Uh, which gave me an, uh, a monthly allowance on top of my allowance of uh, the Fulbright. Without it, uh, I wouldn't have been able to take my wife and my kids, so it would have been half the experience for me, I think. The, the application uh, procedure at the Fulbright went relatively smooth, I think. Uh, my application at Harvard was equally smooth. I, I, I had this clear idea that I wanted to be at Harvard and I applied at the Center for U U European Studies in Harvard. Uh, and they just asked for a complete uh, uh, form with a, a clear outline of the research you were, you were going to conduct uh, there. Uh, the way you were hoping to benefit from uh, the expertise at Harvard and especially at the Center for European Studies. And you also had to have three uh, uh, recommendation letters from international scholars. So uh, I assembled my uh, application file in, I think, three months. So it took three months to get the international recommendation letters uh, to write up a, a research project. But when I send it in, I got an answer after 14 days. So that was relatively quick. And uh, that was in fact my key to get a Fulbright. Uh, I was able to show that I was already accepted at Harvard. And I must say that it went relatively easy in the end. Mm, the visa procedure, uh, I have only one tip for people who go there, uh, check your fingers for blisters. Because my wife, she had a tiny, tiny, tiny blister on one of her fingers and she had to go back uh, 14 days later uh, when it was healed because uh, they wouldn't uh, accept the fingerprints of a blistered finger. So that's the only uh, hitch we, we encountered in the whole procedure. My career goals 
were before I went and after I went were clearly to be able to continue my uh, work in the academic sector and uh, the coincidence uh, very coincidentally uh, a week before I we were leaving for the United States I had I had a, uh, an interview at Antwerp University and I was accepted as a professor so I really think that uh, the fact that I was a Fulbright scholar at the moment gave me an edge over the other candidates. So it immediately paid off even before I was even in the US. There's one thing that did actually change. Uh, we both, my wife and I, uh, we both uh, decided that uh, we were going to try to get back to the United States uh, every couple of years uh, on a sabbatical. And actually, in two years' time, I'm going back to Berkeley on the other coast of the US. Uh, so that's a really great uh, thing to look forward to uh, in the next two years. The experience in the US itself, uh, the academic environment in, in Harvard is, and this will sound as a cliche, but it's really vibrant. It's, incredibly active and dynamic uh, people from all over. I got to meet very interesting people. I met an economic advisor of uh, Alexander Dubček uh, from the Prague Spring. Uh, I met uh, people I had only read books of, so uh, I got to meet him in the flesh. Um, I got to discuss my, my research with, with uh, experts in, in a whole range of different fields. So uh, there was really, the Center for European Studies at Harvard is a really interdisciplinary uh, work environment and it really paid off. As to our private life in the US, well, it was possibly the greatest experience we ever had abroad because uh, from the moment we went there, we immediately felt at home. Uh, our neighbors immediately came over to get uh, acquainted, they uh, asked us over for dinner and that's the one thing we will uh, always remember about uh, those uh, uh, months in the US that, that people were so friendly and it was really a culture shock getting back to Belgium. The main thing I'd say to people is uh, don't be put off by the uh, application procedure or by the visa procedure. Uh, they are uh, they can be rather uh, long and uh, uh, you have to put uh, much energy and time into it but it really pays off once you're in the US. It's, uh, it is uh, actually a great deal of work before you leave but once you're there you're free of everything and it's a great environment to study and uh, to do research. It was the emotional and uh, equivalent of uh, having a hot tub. So getting uh, deep into a really friendly and cozy environment, uh, stress-free, uh, very positive, uh, and something we Europeans tend to miss. Uh, we tend to focus too much on what can go wrong instead of thinking about what can go right. So that's the main thing. I took from it that to be to try to be more dynamic. I used to say to my friends that the town voelde als een warm bad, ondergedompeld worden in een zeer vriendelijke omgeving met mensen die altijd vriendelijk zijn en op de duur ga je echt daarin mee en ben je verwonderd als je terugkomt dat het hier niet zo is.